Hey everybody, hope you're all doing well. It's Will here. Welcome back to another episode of the Blackboard Intelligence YouTube channel. Today we're going to continue with our on-chain analysis tutorial. Hope you guys really enjoyed the last video and got some value out of it. Today we're going to look at following whales and following whale behavior throughout Bitcoin's history. Before we get started, we'd really appreciate if you could hit the like button as well as subscribe and let us know any feedback you have on this video as well as metrics you'd like to see covered moving forward. So first, let's start with what is a whale? Everyone likes to throw around this term whales. What are whales doing, right? In on-chain terms, a whale is defined as an entity that has over a thousand BTC. And an entity is a group of forensically clustered addresses that have similar movements. And uh, the data scientists at Glassnode track these movements and come to a conclusion saying, okay, this looks like one entity, right? And then you can look at how many BTC are in possession of that entity. And whales have over a thousand BTC. When we break down Bitcoin supply distribution, this is what we see. So miners have roughly 9.7% of circulating supply. Exchanges hold about 12.7%. Humpbacks, which are over 5,000 BTC, have 13.3%. Whales hold the most at 18.4%. Sharks, which are 500 to 1,000 BTC, have 6.6% .6 of supply. Dolphins, which are 100 to 500 BTC, have 11.8% of supply. Fish, which have 50 to 100 BTC, hold 4.7% of supply. Octopus, which have 10 to 50 BTC, hold 8.9% of supply. Crab, which are 1 to 10 BTC, hold 9% of supply. And shrimp, which are less than, less than 1 BTC, hold 4.9% of supply. So we talk about what is a whale? Why would it be advantageous to follow whale movements? When we look at the breakdown of supply held throughout all the different types of market participants in Bitcoin, Whales hold the largest percent of that supply. So by following what whales are doing, we're tracking what the largest pools of capital are doing and therefore are going to have the most influence on the Bitcoin market. Next, we're looking at the supply distribution again, just in a bit of a different way. So now instead of looking at the percent of supply, we're looking at the percent of entities on blockchain. So instead of saying how many BTC are in possession of these different entities, we're looking at how many of the entities on the blockchain fall into these different categories. And so what we see is that miners are roughly 0.221%. Exchanges are less than 0.001%. Humpbacks are roughly 0.001%. Whales are 0.008%. Sharks are 0.007%. Dolphins, 0.044%. Fish, 0.047%. Octopus coming in at 0.313%. Crabs are at 2.45% and shrimps are the largest at 96.9% .9 of all the entities on the blockchain. So what does this mean? It's showing you again, a large portion of supply is held by a, a smaller portion of market participants. The largest portion of market participants, which are shrimp holding less than one BTC, make up 96% of all the entities on chain. And so of course, this means that the supply distribution of Bitcoin isn't perfect, but we'll talk about the trend that it's heading in the next couple slides. So this is looking at the supply distribution of Bitcoin. So we have all the entities that we talked about on the bottom in the, in the bottom legend there. And what you'll see is that over time, you'll see a couple different things. So first of all, miners hold a smaller portion of supply. You'll see that exchanges over time since call, you know, 2013, 2014, have taken up a larger portion of supply. But since 2020, that's been declining. You'll see that humpbacks hold a smaller portion of supply over Bitcoin's history. Same with whales, sharks, dolphins. And what you'll see is that shrimp is actually increasing in terms of the amount of supply that they hold. Here we're looking at the point that I just touched on on, on shrimp. We're looking at all these small guys in terms of, and, and I'm defining this here as entities with less than 10 BTC. And we're comparing that to the overall circulating supply of Bitcoin. And so what you see is that the supply distribution is actually trending in a very healthy direction. Although it's not perfect, it's definitely trending up and to the right. So you're seeing that a larger portion of supply is being taken up by these smaller holders, which is a healthy trend. And given, you know, Bitcoin is only 12 years old, so we can't expect the supply distribution to be perfect. We just want to understand where is it heading, and it is heading in the right direction. Uh, another thing to keep in mind here is you'll also hear, you know, a lot of people talk about, well, a large portion of supply is held by a large portion of entities. Yes, this is true, as we just looked at. 
but it misses a very important part of nuance in terms of filtering out exchanges. Why is this important? Because exchanges or custody solutions could be holding Bitcoin for hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people. This is analogous to saying like, you know, a large portion of the US dollar supply is held by a small portion of entities if there was, you know, some kind of ledger recording all the US dollar transactions, meaning, you know, a large portion of US dollars were held by banks, which of course this is the case, but banks are holding, you know, custody of, of you know, savings and, and checking for, you know, hundreds of thousands, millions and millions of, of Americans and, and people around the world. So, Next, we're looking at um, and, uh, whales that are filtered for exchanges. Why is this important? Because as we talked about, exchanges since 2013, 2014 have taken up a much more substantial portion of supply. And exchanges, while they're recognized as whales on chain, that doesn't mean that they're, you know, an entity that's going to be buying or selling. It's just an aggregated version of all the market participants that are coming to that exchange. Um, and so this is the raw filtered number of uh, BTC held by whales. And so we see a couple interesting patterns here. Um, overall, what you see is that it's a, it's a pretty good idea to follow whales, right? You, you see that whenever whales holdings are increasing, you see generally you see price, price uh, appreciation following that. If we look at like 2013, they accumulated all the way up into the kind of mini bear between the two 2013 double pumps and then sold into that strength, as you can see here. Hope you can see my cursor. Um, heading into the bear market, you know they they did kind of sell this this top from you know from the 2013 peak down to before we headed into the bear. Um, into the bear, they did reaccumulate a lot of those coins, and then into the 20, 2017 uh, bull run, they distributed pretty much the whole way through. Now this is interesting because they actually didn't buy the bottom. You would think that whales, you know, there's this meme of like whales buy the bottom and then they you know perfectly time the top. This obviously isn't the case as shown here, but whales did initiate a lot of that momentum in the run up from 2020 into, you know, call it January, February of 2021. And also whenever we saw whales holdings peak out and we did start to see redistribution from whales that marked the top, right? If you were following this, you saw when whales holdings peaked and they started to distribute that kind of signaled, uh, you know, a macro top for Bitcoin. We saw another brief reaccumulation period at the end of summer, all the way up until call it you know, late August into September. And since then they've been uh, steadily distributing their, their BTC. So that was the number of coins held by these entities. So held by whales. This is looking at the number of whales. Okay, so there's a, just a bit of a distinction there in terms of we're looking at the number of whales rather than the amount of BTC that they hold. Uh, and so you see, you know, pretty much same trend there. Um, you know, obviously at the beginning of 2021, uh, that was a huge deal. And I remember this at the time seeing, you know, this massive growth in whales on chain and just as quickly as they came into the market, they left the market. Um, and since then, you've just kind of seen whales flat. This is combining the two. So we're taking the number of whales as well as the amount of BTC they hold, running them together. So the number of whales is the dark green. The, their holdings is in light green. <clears throat> You'll see for the most for the most part, they pretty much correlate. Right, you, you generally see when one declines, the other declines. When one's increasing, the other's increasing. Except you will see these kind of like small uh, disparities between the two. One example in recent times was over the summer of 2021. You saw a number of whales was flat, but you saw whales uh, holdings were increasing right here, which this is very interesting, uh, you know, kind of divergence between the two. And this again just shows you, you need to be looking at both if you are trying to attract these whale movements, right? Because you could have the number of whales flat, right? And, and you know, you may have, go, you may be going, I'm just pulling this, you know, random number, you may be going from like 50 whales to 25 whales, but those 25 whales may be accumulating a massive amount of BTC and causing price appreciation because they're locking up supply and bidding up, um, bidding up the price. So um, again, important to look at both of these, especially in tandem, when you see confluence between the number of whales and their holdings, that tends to be the best signal in that sense. And so in conclusion, what we find is that whales buy strategically and retail stacks BTC no matter what. As we talked about, retail's holdings, again, are up and to the right. And this is, you know, a chart that I would show someone who was looking to take a longer term position in BTC just to show that, you know, there's a hardcore base of people that are dollar cost averaging into this asset no matter what, right? Of course, this increases more so in the bull market, but over time, this trends upwards up and to the right. Um, and so, you know, this is showing you that, you know, A, there's, there's, you know, 
user growth as well as that there's this hardcore line of, of holders that are continuing to dollar cost average into Bitcoin. Second conclusion is that Bitcoin supply distribution isn't perfect yet, but it is heading in the right direction. So again, the supply distribution is heavily skewed in terms of whales holding a larger portion of supply. But you know, you could say the same thing about stocks and also Bitcoin is only 12 years old. So the, the key component here is that it's trending in the right direction, although it's not perfect now. You know, as Bitcoin's price appreciation uh, occurs over the next you know, 10, 15, 20 years, you'll have an incentive for these early adopters, these early whales to distribute their coins into, uh, you know, into the market. And that's how supply, will, supply distribution will just continue to become more healthy. And last conclusion is that following whale buying does give an edge in the market, but they don't perfectly time the macro bottoms. And you know, I think 2018 was a great example of this. Right? We saw that whales were actually distributing uh, and were kind of exiting the market into 2018. Although, you know, following their movements have kind of given some market edge. You know, if you're following their buys here up into the 2016, 2017 bull run, that would have been advantageous as well as following their distributing into the top, uh, buying their, their buying leading up to the 2013 run. Um, and as well, heading into 2020, 2021 would have been advantageous to, you know, follow this large increase in, in whale activity. So with that being said, I uh, hope you guys really enjoyed the video. We'll try to do another couple um, over the next week or so. Um, let me know, you know, honest feedback about what you'd like to see uh, in terms of metrics covered and, and anything that maybe you'd, you'd like me to change about the, the presentations and, and the way the videos are done. So again, appreciate you guys. Uh, thanks so much for listening and hope you have a good day and I'll, I'll see you in the next one. Take it easy.